We are in the middle of talking about quantum numbers. Quantum numbers are a set of four numbers that are assigned to the electrons in an atom to describe their location in the electron cloud. And so far, we've talked about the principal quantum number, which describes the energy level of the electron or the maximum size of its orbital. We've also talked about the angular momentum quantum number, which describes the shape of the electron cloud or the shape of the orbital, spherical shape versus P-shaped versus these crazy D orbitals. The next quantum number that we're going to talk about is called the magnetic quantum number. And the magnetic quantum number is abbreviated lowercase m with a lowercase italicized subscript L. We pronounce that M sub L. The magnetic quantum number, or the M sub L, describes the direction of the orbital. So what direction is it pointing in? This is asking, is the orbital pointing from left to right, or is it pointing from top to bottom, or at an angle? What direction is the orbital actually pointing in? So let's take, let's take a look at our orbitals and think about the different directions that they can point. So when we're talking about the s orbital, and the s orbital is perfect sphere, there's only one direction that that orbital can point, or you could say that there's no direction that it can point. It doesn't have directionality because it's a perfect sphere. So for the atomic orbital s, we're just going to say that it has one direction. There's only one possibility uh, in terms of how we could point the s orbital. Now the p orbital, because it is more elongated, we could actually point that p orbital in a few different directions. And we see within an atom that the p orbital can point a total of three different directions. Now of course there are more than three possibilities for how a person could hold a shape like this. Like there's actually a lot of possibilities. But in an atom, we see that this particular orbital only points itself in one of three directions. It either goes side to side like this, or it goes up and down like this, or it goes kind of at an angle like this. So one of these three shapes. And we're gonna talk a lot more about the directions of the P orbital in a later video. Like for now, we're just sort of going through it pretty fast and we'll come back to this concept in a little bit and we'll explore this with more detail. For the D orbitals, there's actually five different directions that these, these orbitals can point. And in this video, I'm not gonna take any time to kind of sketch out the five possible directions for the v orbital, D orbitals. We're gonna save all of that for a later video. But this is the general idea that the D orbitals will point in five different directions, kind of like that. So let's keep this in the back of our head. The s orbital, when l equals zero, has only one direction. When l equals one, has three directions. And when l equals two, five directions. Now the actual quantum number itself, the values of m sub l, start at zero, just like the value of l starts at zero. And it, its next set of values are plus and minus one and the next set of values plus and minus two and this continues so on all the way up to plus and minus l so very much in the way that the potential value or possible value of l depends on the value of n the possible values of m sub l also depend on the value of l so this one can be kind of tricky to understand. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say that we have an electron. We're gonna start really simple. We have an electron that is in the n equals one level. And let's write out the possible values of L for that electron. So when our electron is in n equals one, the possible values of L start at zero and they go all the way up to n minus one. So they start at zero and they go all the way up to one minus one, which is zero. So we only have one possible value of L for this particular electron. Now the M sub L also starts at zero and it goes all the way up to plus and minus L. Well, L itself is zero. So we're starting at zero and we're going up to zero. We're just at zero. So for this particular electron, for the electron in N equals one, the only possible value of L is zero 
the only possible value of m sub l is also zero. But let's make things a little bit trickier. So let's say that we have an electron in n equals, let's say n equals three. What are the possible values of l for that electron? Well, the possible values of L start at zero and they work their way all the way up to N minus one. In this case, N is three, three minus one is two. So our possible values of L are zero or one or two. I'm gonna write them like this, one on top of the other. So for the, oops, what did I do there? For the N equals three electron, elect, electron there are three possible values of M sub L and again, the electron that we're talking about is only going to choose one of these three L values. Maybe it's gonna choose L equals one, or maybe it's gonna choose L equals three, but it doesn't exist with all three of these numbers at the same time. Okay, so let's bring M sub L into the mix. When we have an electron at N equals three, and let's say that it chose L equals zero. If it chooses L equals zero, what are its options for M sub L? Well, M sub L starts at zero, and it works its way all the way up to plus or minus L. For this electron, L is zero, so it just starts at zero, just like we saw up here, and it goes to zero, its only option is zero. What if our N equals three electron chose L equals one? If it chooses L equals one, what are the values of M sub L? If it chooses L equals one, the values of M sub L start at zero, so we've got zero as an option, and they go all the way up to plus L and minus L. So that means they go all the way up to plus one and minus one. And it doesn't matter which order you write these in. The only thing that really matters is that you have written three different possible values of M sub L. What if, last but not least, what if our N equals three electron chooses L equals two? And if it chooses L equals two, what are the possible values of M sub L? Well, again, M sub L starts at zero and it goes all the way up to plus or minus L. So it starts at zero and then we have plus one and minus one as an option, plus two and minus two as an option. So what is this telling us? If our electron in N equals three chooses L equals two, then it has five possible choices for the M sub L value. Now, again, keep in mind that an electron is only gonna choose one of these combinations. So N equals three maybe chooses L equals one, and then it will select one of these three values. So maybe it's N equals three, L equals one, M sub L equals zero. Maybe it's n equals three, l equals two, and then it can choose any one of these three val five values. So maybe this one right here. And so this, um, for us as chemists, the way that we interpret this information is the number of possible values of M sub L just tells us the number of possible directions for the orbital. So this tells us that there are five different directions for this electron because we have five values of M sub L. And this tells us that there are three different directions for this electron because we have three values of M sub L. And then this only has one direction.